Uh, Boomi, the Indonesian-focused thermal coal group, uh, says uh, Sir Julian Horn-Smith, a senior independent non-executive director, is calling on Matt Rothschild to return the bonus shares that he was granted as a reward following the transaction which created the company. This is Boomi shareholders gear up for a February 21st vote on a proposal by Nat Rothschild that would result in the ousting of almost all of the group's directors. My understanding is that that shareholding gift was uh, about 16 million uh, dollars. Sam Intan is uh, chairman of Boomi PLC um, and joins us in the studio and uh, we will point out we are hoping to speak to Nat Rothschild fairly shortly but sir let's let's begin with you thank you very much for, for, for joining us thank you. Um, in many ways this is now a battle for the hearts and minds of shareholders at that February 21st meeting um, a lot has happened in the relationship between the two parties in this uh, discussion, a lot of it very unpleasant. What can you now offer the shareholders at this February 21st meeting that draws a line under the disagreements and turns around a business that had seen its share price fall over 60%? We offer a solution that NET cannot offer uh, simply because uh, the solution entails the separation of Bumi PLC from the Bakris and Bakris have categorically said and openly said that they will not and they're not prepared to deal with NET at all or the vote that is proposed by NET. Well, uh, you've got to offer a little bit more than that. I mean, what is it that you can give the business post this shareholder vote that is different from what's gone before because the history we know is very troubled. There are investments in businesses that ultimately turned out to be failed investments, $75 million seems to have appeared as a black hole as a result of a failed investment in a fund. The company appears to have been mismanaged almost from day one. So why will it be any different if you win the day on February 21st? Okay, let, let me, at the outset, let me respond to say that, you know, I did not come into Bumi from the first, from the day one that Bala was formed or when Bala acquired Bumi uh, Indonesia as well as Barau. I came in two years after that, okay? And who to blame? for the failure in the valley of Bumi uh, PLC. Uh, our friend Matt has to be blamed because he created the structure. He designed the structure which with benefit of hindsight we, we agree that it's a flawed structure. In partnership structure. with the Bakri family. In partnership with the Bakri here. family. I mean it, this is not Nat Rothschild's sole doing. Ultimately the relationship has been a troubled one almost since inception and the Bakri family have played their part in making this business difficult. That's they? exactly my point. Why do you want to uh, structure deal whereby you actually rely on the goodwill, rely on the courtesy of the Indonesian partner. That's exactly the structure that that has created from day one. Well, the structure is broken, the relationship is broken, the, the step forward seems to uh, get rid of Bumi resources and separate from the backwards. But how exactly do you do that when there's so many interconnecting relationships? How do you maximize the price and the sale of the asset? That, that is exactly what we're going to do. We have heard enough uh, from the rest of shareholders here in London. They all uniformly want Buckley to get out of Bumi PLC. And we have been pursuing this. And we believe we have a deal to sign with Buckley very, very soon. It may be announced as soon as next week. However, let me repeat again. Buckley has categorically said that they will not deal with NAT or a board that is proposed by NAT. If NET wins this GM, they will pull out from the separation uh, discussion. But from a shareholder's point of view, the beauty of, of NAT is that he doesn't have a, a good relationship with the backers, so therefore will be more inclined to maximize the price. That could be the feeling from shareholders anyway who are demanding independence. How do you prove that there is integrity around the pricing that you're then offered by the backers for Bumi Resources? We should assume that if NET wins this coming EGM, the discussion about the separation between Bakri's and Bumi PLC will completely break down. And as a result, Bakri will continue to be the shareholders of Bumi PLC. And what I can tell realistically, it will be just months and months, if not years and years, of litigation among various parties. And, and, and it's just a destruction of value, further value of Bumi uh, PLC. The question that I have, and in fact one of our viewers has also raised this as well, assuming you get to the point where there is a separation uh, that takes place, how does this company ever do business in that part of the world again, in Indonesia for instance, because the Bakris are extremely powerful in that part of the world. Do you think it's going to be extremely challenging for, for Bumi to ever go back into business there? You know, 
with, with the current board, okay, with the current board, you have a very willing party called Bakri from Indonesia to try to separate from Bumi PLC. Therefore, you know, I believe that if this board uh, win this EGM, the relationship with Bakri will be as such that you know we can manage the Indonesian assets uh, 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 freely. If, if I could just ask, you know, we, we, we talk about you know, the separation of, of the Bumi from the Bankri interests. Uh, well, who actually takes up uh, the Bankri interests? Because you know, there's got to be somebody, a few new investors coming in to buy the Bankris out. Okay. So, so, so where does that investment come from? The, the, the shares, that Bakri will, will have to return the shares to the Bakri, uh, to Bumi PLC, part of the separation deal, mm -hmm. and those shares will be cancelled by Bumi PLC. So there's no such other investor who will come to take up the So it's Bakri a pure share. cancellation? It's a pure cancellation, right. which will generate into enhancements of the value of Bumi PLC, the share price of Bumi PLC, part of this uh, share cancellation. One of the um, uh, allegations that Nat Rothschild makes is that you are in some way involved in a side deal with the Bakri Group. Could you clarify at this point what your relationship is with the Bakri Group? Because you have said that the future, if you win, takes the Bakri Group out of uh, the arrangements. If there is a, uh, an underhand relationship, then surely no shareholder can feel comfortable with that. So w what exactly is your relationship and is Nat Rothschild's allegation completely without foundation? Um, well, I I'm not sure whether the term side deal is the appropriate term to be used here. Yes, uh, we do have our discussion. Uh, we are unra unra un unraveling our relationship, our, our partnership with Bakri as well. Now, you have to understand, when we came into Bumi PLC, we didn't come to Bumi PLC to buy the Bumi PLC share per se. We entered into a joint venture with Bakri for which we signed a shareholders agreement. So we are right now dissolving our shareholders uh, agreement with the Bakris and as a result there may be some sort of financial settlement. So it is not a side deal. Anyway, my point is that whatever settlement that I'm going to be able or Borneo going to be able to get from Bakri will be immaterial compared to the total size of the loss that I have suffered as well as other shareholders here in London uh, suffered out of the structure that NET actually created. But would well, you do business with the Bakris again from here on in? Well, uh, <clears throat> Bakri, uh, well, first of all, Indonesia is a small uh, uh, business community. Okay? Everyone knows each other. Okay? Everyone do business with each other. But as far as Bumi is concerned, we are striking a separation uh, ourselves with the Bakri as well. Okay? Let me talk about um, the term side deal that, uh, that Ned keep referring to that I have with the Bakris. If you want to use the term side deals, all right? I actually don't get the bonus shares for $180 million worth of value at the time from Bumi PLC for free. One, net does. Secondly, I don't have private jet to fly around and I don't get my private jet costs charged to the company and I don't get management fees from the company. I don't. But one of the people who will lose out is Nat Rothschild himself, who as well as the bonus has put another £16 million into this business to increase his holding so that he has a fair chance of perhaps wresting the company away and take it in the direction that he wants to take it. My, my issue with the potential side deal, and I'm not sure how your relationship with the Bakris sits, only you know that, but my concern is that where's the honest broker? in this ongoing discussion it seems to me that the shareholders um, are not getting anything except a confused bunch of allegations but what's clear to them is that they have lost nearly two-thirds of their investment in this business surely that tells you in future you would be fairly foolish to buy um, positions in Indonesian mining companies well you cannot you cannot have faith ultimately in the activities that are happening within the business. Is two there a, points. There's a real corporate governance issue at the heart of this? Uh, two points. Two points. Uh, who to blame for all of this value destruction, in my opinion, it, it's partly uh, uh, attributed to that as well, because with his confrontational approach in trying to find a solution, has actually pushed the share price down. Because who wants to buy a share when among, well, the shoulders are fighting, first of all? And secondly, as I said, Bakri has categorically said that they will not separate themselves from uh, Bumi PLC if NAT wins this EGM. In addition, they will want to exercise their right under the, sub the relationship agreement to have the three key positions in Bumi PLC continue to be occupied by Bakri. Is that what we want?
What you highlight, though, is some of the shareholder dissent uh, and the concerns. Wal King, one of the names put forward by Nat Rothschild, is, is a highly respected businessman with a hugely successful career in Australia. He's had operations across the board in many of these countries. Wouldn't he be a shining light brought into Boomi, fresh talent with, with no ties to the group? I have no doubt that uh, Mr. Walking is a very honourable gentleman. Uh, I'm no doubt that he's very, very capable. But this morning alone, I was told that he said two things in the media here. First of all, he wants Boomi PLC to develop gold business. What is the strategy now? Our strategy right in front of us is to actually separate ourselves from Buckley. Let's not get into what other businesses want to develop for now. One. And secondly, he also uh, quoted to say that the size of the loss in Boomi PLC is 500 million US dollars. Okay? Whereas I believe Mr. Rothschild said 1 billion dollars last week. So do they know what's going on? Do you, do you think, um, the vote that comes up on the 21st of February, do you think shareholders have a very clear choice and do you think they have a clear understanding of the strategy and the development of the business dependent on which side wins? And that's why I'm here in London last week and plus today and tomorrow in London to talk to these uh, shareholders to make sure that they get the maximum amount of fair and objective information about the agenda that we're trying to push forward here. I'm very grateful to Breaking Views for pointing out something which is probably slightly different from every single question you've been asked so far, and that is not only is it governance issues that is affecting Boomi share price uh, and the spat between uh, yourselves and Mr. Rothschild, it's the fact that thermal coal prices are under enormous amounts of pressure and are actually very unlikely to rally any time soon. Uh, and that's what uh, Kevin Allison is saying in Breaking Views. My point here being is, despite this battle, whoever wins and whoever's business model is the one going forward, the product isn't necessarily uh, having a great run at the moment. Well, uh, first of all, let me say that, you know, uh, with the assumption that Bumi PLC can separate itself from uh, Bumi resources, it will be left with Burrow. Burrow is a very good uh, 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 piece of uh, coal asset in Indonesia. It has very, very simple geology. It does produce 20 million tons of coal last year. And, and, and it is with the current management that, you know, actually bring up the production from 11 million tons a year a few years ago to now 20 million tons and will continue sure. to push for the production and we believe the coal price will recover. It doesn't change the fact that thermal coal prices are pretty much half of what they were in 2008 though, does it sir? That's precisely why we said there's still upside on the coal price. We, uh, we, we truly believe so. Just a, just a final quick question for me. Do you think that there is an establishment in the UK that is working against you on your pitch to the shareholders and I, I just ask you this question because I'm mindful of the ruling that went against you to a certain extent and limited the ability of, of your side if you like to, to um, put its shares into the vote. You brought up a very good point about you know, a ruling that was, uh, that was recently issued and this is exactly the PR machine of net. Okay? What the recent ruling by the takeover panel is on the concert party relationship between Recapital, another Indonesian investor in Bumi, with the Bakris. Okay? It's not about me, it's not about Borneo. Okay? We have always been, from day one we were involved in Bumi PLC, is already a concert party to Bakri by virtue of the structure of investment into Bumi PLC. And it was announced, it was declared from day one, and it was consulted with the authorities here in London. So for Net to say that I've been ruled recently by the panel to be a concert party, it's a complete lie. It's a complete lie. So is it the British establishment coming together to try and squeeze you out of the, the position? I, I, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. This is just a PR machine of net post shot. Thanks for taking our questions. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming in. Samin Tan, uh, Chairman of Boomi.